And now he goes for a headlock. Headlock takedown. Oh, by the way, follow us on Twitter. And now he's going to go for a sleeper hold. Wait, I, I takes a selfie. And now he's going to go for a loot that's pressing counters. I mean, come on. That was absolutely ridiculous. Hey, 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 what's up and how's it going, everyone? Well, I'm so glad that you have took your time to spend with me right here today on the Make Rock and Bolt Wrestling Review Show. I'm your co-host, Mike McRock Wilson, and last night was WWE Monday Night Raw live from Dallas, Texas. The show kicked off when Randy Orton, the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, came out and he cut a promo and we saw the authority in there as well as well as all the superstars that were on stage. And Randy Orton mentioned in his promo that um, there's a reason why everyone is on stage and he's in the ring. It's because he is better than everyone on the roster. And he also said he don't have to answer to anyone. And then Stephanie McMahon undercuts him and says, except for us. And then we saw John Cena interrupt Randy Orton and they talked about uh, the match at TLC. On Sunday night and then he said that um, uh, it's time to put up and or shut up and face Daniel Bryan for the uh, championship match and uh, what happened was was that uh, Triple H uh, spoke and he said that um, uh, because uh, uh, well Triple H and Stephanie uh, both cut the promo and, and they basically said because Daniel Bryan is the superstar of the year uh, why not give him a match with Randy Orton which I will get to later on in this review and there was something Triple H mentioned I think was completely wrong he said he always listens to the WWE universe I think that is bull crap he never listens to the universe because of what transpired months before on pay-per-views when we have screwy finishes over and over and over he does not give the uh, audience what they want and I think what happened was was that he finally actually done something right putting Daniel Bryan in a one-on-one -on -one match with Randy Orton in the main event and um, basically what happened was was that um, when we saw a weird finish like I said I will get to later on in this review uh, overall this show uh, I thought that first segment was a good way to kick off raw everything else in between was very very questionable and the final segment on the show the match between Orton and Daniel Bryan was really good like I said I'll get to that later on. Um, after that, we saw the Brotherhood, Cody Rhodes and Goldust versus Rey Mysterio and the Big Show. Uh, I thought that match was uh, okay. Uh, like I said, uh, everything else besides the first segment and the last segment were just okay. But there were a lot of things I did not like. Hang on, I take a selfie. Case in point, the commentators taking a selfie in the middle of a match. <sighs> no words, no words. <sighs> uh, at this point, I am just absolutely fed up with Michael Cole, Jerry the King, and JBL. And I thought uh, mentioning Twitter during Raw was bad enough and now they take a selfie in the middle of a match that was absolutely ridiculous it is disrespectful to the people that are in the ring competing for the fans and I think that those three guys are so watered up in their technology they forget what's going on in the ring it's absolutely ridiculous do your jobs Call the match. I can go on and on, but I'm not going to waste any more time concentrating on 
this stupid thing that the announcers pulled in the middle of a match. Moving on. Uh, what happened was Big Show and Rey Mysterio won. Here's the interesting, well not interesting, but here's another bad thing about it. Uh, we saw the voting poll, uh, be, you know, with the three teams, who's going to face the Rhodes Brothers. And we never even got to see the results. It was like, oh, Booyaka Booyaka, 619, Rey Mysterio and the Big Show came out. And it was like, we knew that. It was just too predictable. And Rey Mysterio and the Big Show just feels like two guys. The WWE has completely don't know what to do with them. And they just decide to throw them into a tag team. And it was face versus face. It was absolutely ridiculous. Why weren't the real Americans being involved in that match? Or the Usos or anyone else who was at a legitimate tag team should be in facing the tag team champions. Instead of two guys being thrown in randomly. Absolutely ridiculous on the part of WWE, I think in my opinion. We also saw Dolph Ziggler versus Fandango, and I think this was the only one of the two one-on-one -on -one matches. Like I said, this was Tag Team Mania, Tag Team Galore. They had another Raw like this I thought was absolutely horrid. Uh, I mean, they couldn't make all these tag teams in one-on-one -on -one matches, and they don't. It's absolutely ridiculous. We saw Dolph Ziggler go one-on-one -on -one where, with Fandango, where Dolph Ziggler went over. And basically, this is, you know, the another saga of one guy winning, another guy winning after, and the tiebreaker. We saw that with Damian Sandow and, um, and uh, Dolph Ziggler, and that was okay. But to repeat that again is absolutely, I think, bottom line, ridiculous. Um, having Dolph Ziggler go over Fandango, I'm sure next week we're going to have... Dolph Ziggler and Fandango again for the third time where the tiebreaker... Uh, I, I'm just not going to go any further beyond that. We also saw the real Americans, the real Americans facing two guys being thrown into a tag team like Big Show and Rey Mysterio. They face Biggie Langston and Mark Henry. They're probably building up this match between Biggie Langston and Mark Henry for the Intercontinental Championship. I'm okay with it. It's just that this show was tag team galore. Uh, the real Americans. Uh, I mean, who is booking this crap? It's it's absolutely ridiculous for the real Americans being put into a match between two guys that are not a team. They should be facing the tag team champions. They are over with the fans. We the people. Great manager. Great wrestlers. And the WWE is just absolutely not doing good things on uh, last night's show. It's just too much of a good thing. You can't have too many tag team matches. That was the problem of last night's show. I'm going to say it over and over and over until someone sees this video from the WWE and think, let's take a step back a little bit. Don't have too many tag team matches on one show. We also saw Ryback Baxel versus Tons of Funk. And I thought, you know, Tons of Funk coming, even coming out in their entrance was like no sell job to what happened at TLC. It's like TLC never even happened when we saw Tensa and the Funkodactyls had enough of Brodus Clay. That was ridiculous, I think. And I, uh, this would have been better if Brodus Clay went one-on-one -on -one with Tensai, uh, Sweet T. Uh, because of what happened at TLC, and they don't capitalize on what they done the night before. And uh, having them face right back, so, you know, I I'm not going to complain about, you know, right back, so, uh, Curtis Axel and right back being thrown together as a tank team because it makes sense. They were two Paul Heyman guys that have been dumped by Paul Heyman, so it makes sense for them to... Uh, be a tag team but for other teams like Big Show and Rey Mysterio and Biggie Lex and Mark Henry to be a tag team absolutely ridiculous going back to that match between them and Tons of Fuck what happened was was that Tensai and Axel they started off the match Tensai hits the big shoulder block 
But Axel bounces back with a drop kick, and then we saw Ry Ryback being tagged in and running across body on Tensai. And the fight goes out for a tag. Brodus refuses to tag in the match, and then hits a, a, a move on Tensai. Uh, the, the Ryback hits the meat hook, and then shell shock on um, Tensai, and then Ryback goes for the cover, gets the three count. And then after the match, you know, we saw uh, Brodus Clay, you know, taking out Tensai, and this is just too late too soon. I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, uh, after that, we saw CM Punk uh, came out and cut a promo. He... Uh, he was talking about his match uh, on uh, TLC against The Shield and what happened there. He mentioned that um, uh, Triple H has something to do with it, the whole conspiracy angle. And uh, he he wanted Triple H to come out and um, tell him that it was all on him. He got Shawn Michaels instead. And I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting now. And I think that part of the show was interesting where Shawn Michaels and CM Punk were talking. It was a good dialogue scene, I thought, uh, where um, uh, CM Punk uh, kind of put Michaels over when he said, you know, he was stoked when Shawn Michaels gave him a speech in music. 15-year-old me uh, was stoked when Shawn Michaels hit him. And uh, I think that, you know... This, the stuff like that it was oh you know it was cool to see on screen and um uh Shawn michaels coming back you know the portraying the heel i thought was really uh good i think i thought and uh how they mentioned um what happened uh just before tlc when Shawn michaels switch and music cm punk all that stuff etc etc i thought that you know that was interesting you know enough but it's just the promo uh, kind of went nowhere. All it was was a tease to see, you know, what's going to lead to this uh, upcoming in the next few months going into WrestleMania. But overall, the entire thing with Shawn Michaels and CM Punk kind of went nowhere. All it was was Shawn Michaels introducing his opponents. <gasps> we got the voting poll. The Usos were um, CM Punk's uh, tag team. Uh, he was going to partner up with, and at the end, the Shield uh, bet uh, the Usos and CM Punk. After the uh, after um, CM Punk nailed the GTS, Roman Reigns hit the spear. One, two, three. We we saw no tease of the Shield split up on Raw. We saw it on TLC, and I think that's another thing the WWE should have capitalized on is to have another seat planted but I can understand you know uh, Ra not uh, giving the shield another loss so having them win I thought was the logical thing to do last night on Monday Night Raw we also saw the Bella Twins and Natalia versus AJ Lee, Tamina Snuka and Alicia Fox the winners where the heels AJ Lee Tamina Snuka and Alicia Fox won that match. Uh, I'm not really going to go any further than that other than um, putting AJ Lee over was the smart decision coming off of TLC because they have buried AJ Lee uh, before TLC in a lot of their matches. And I think uh, AJ Lee needs to continue on this path right now because of those... The questionable losses that the WWE has booked AJ Lee in. So with that being said, you know, going forth now with the Divas division and who should face the Divas champion is questionable right now. There's no uh, credible opponents other than Natalia. I could see another rematch between the two of them. But other than that, I just don't see anyone else facing AJ Lee at this point in time for the Divas title. And then the main event was Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan. There was... Here's the thing about that match. That was an absolute great match between two individuals. Uh, without the title on the line, which was smart because, you know, they 
right away, you don't want Randy Orton to defend the title. Uh, you want to wait until the pay-per-view Royal Rumble to build up a storyline between two guys. Here's the interesting thing. Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, uh, I thought was a great match. This match was on fire. Absolutely great. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it until Randy Orton low blowed Daniel Bryan. And I thought the way that match ended was absolutely ridiculous because this match was on fire so good it just had to end in a disqualification that was ridiculous to say the least I think in my opinion having a no disqualification result in a match where it was just going so well the disqualification completely ruined the entire match and uh, having John Cena come out and uh, get Randy Orton uh, only for Randy Orton to RKO John Cena and the two of them are left laying Daniel Bryan and John Cena Randy Orton standing tall I can understand that because you don't want the champion to look weak after a pay-per-view event and you also don't want to bury Daniel Bryan so I can understand the logic behind the result I just don't like how the match ended I don't uh, because this match was on fire that's the reason why I think the result was absolutely ridiculous and the way this is looking right now is that um, this is going to be leading to a triple threat match I hope to God that's not going to happen it looks like Randy Orton versus John Cena versus Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble for the WWE World championship match I pray to God that does not happen me personally I would like to see a match between John Cena and Daniel Bryan the winner faces Randy Orton at the Royal Rumble that would be okay but here's the interesting thing the Royal Rumble match itself I would like to see Daniel Bryan win the Royal Rumble go to WrestleMania and face the champion and he defeats the champion at WrestleMania. That's the big payoff for Daniel Bryan. That will make a lot of people happy, I think, in my opinion. What do you think of the end result of the main event with Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan? Comment below and let me know. That was my review of last night's Monday Night Raw in Dallas, Texas. And on a final note, uh, subscribe to uh, MRB Wrestling Reviews on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Hang on, I'm going to take a selfie. <sighs> and other than that, get plenty of rest and always do your best.